Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Greenworks is known for making a bunch of OPE tools. So today we have for you one of their Axial style blowers in their 24 volt platform. And we've had a good chance to use it. Um, we've probably used it on a bunch of like dust clipping or grass clippings, sawdust, chainsaw clippings, leaves, um, just blowing out sand and gravel or sand and, and um, concrete dust and things like that. So anyways, we're gonna go through it top to bottom. So stick with us. All right guys, so this one right here is model number BLG306 and it's one of their newer models of the uh, Axial style blowers in their 24 volt platform, okay? Greenworks makes a bunch of blowers, okay? There's a bunch of blowers in, in, in their 24 volt platform. There's a bunch of blowers in their other voltage platforms. So that being said, Greenworks does have a bunch of other uh, voltage platforms, but today we're here to talk about this 24 volt one. And the 24 volt platform is generally considered um, more entry level type type uh, platform with like, you know, 24 volt. You can get pretty much like their Greenworks 80 volt, which is considered more of a um, more higher demand, more of a pro type platform but just because you're in a 24 volt platform doesn't mean that the tools are really bad or that it's any slouch so when it comes to blowers um there's there's a handful of styles but there's mainly two types of styles of like fans right so there's like the centrifugal type and then there is the axial type right so um when this one right here is the axial type what does that mean it really means the propeller blade turbine type setup is really a parallel to the air that's really coming in okay so the the motor and the fan pretty much is right here right and the air is blowing from it's pulling it from back and blow it to the front what does that mean the main benefit of an axial style blower is it allows you to move more quantities of air generally easier but the downside is it cannot do it at a high pressure okay so you'll kind of, i mean there's pros and cons to each one but a lot of the ones you see on the market are going to be axial style because it just generally seem to be a little bit more efficient and draw a little bit less energy to do that but we're not here to talk about that kind of stuff so we're going to talk about this blower um, right here when you get it as a kit it comes with obviously this blower this tube this concentrator nozzle this 24 volt greenworks charger and this uh, very interesting uh, 24 volt two amp hour greenworks battery but we're going to get into it a little bit more in detail but before we do that let's get over the marketing hype okay this greenworks 24 volt axial style leaf blower uh, has is rated for pretty much 90 miles per hour and 320 cfm and when you get it as a kit it includes a two amp hour battery and the battery is very interesting mainly because it does have a USB A port charger which kind of turns it into a 12 amp hour USB A power bank okay so that in itself is interesting it does have a two the blower has a two speed configuration you can do speed one or speed two it does not have a variable speed trigger we'll drill more into that in a little bit you can use the blower without the concentrator nozzle but if you do put the concentrator nozzle in there it'll increase the wind velocity and um, the cfm so when you run it with a two amp hour battery they say it comes up it runs up to about 14 minutes of runtime in my experience depending on if you use it on one or two i got somewhere between 10 to 15 um, that's just with like general usage not just constant on okay um, and they give the tool and the battery a three-year warranty which is obviously great if the company stands behind their tool and they also pride themselves in quick response quick reply meaning if you're submitting tickets or calling them or whatever because you need help or whatnot they'll generally get back to you pretty quickly which is generally good because most of you guys know if you have to request technical support or you have to warranty something or whatever it's usually not a very convenient process okay and generally i like to buy tools that don't need any of that or, or at least a lot of that mainly because i mean that's just really annoying to deal with like like sending tools back or customer service and not, not even just that the downtime is actually worse than all of that but anyways um you can buy this tool pretty much in most of their um um, retailers that sell the uh, Greenworks tools but um, you can also buy directly from Greenworks um, at greenworkspower.com which is pretty much what I would recommend if you can because it's always better to deal directly with the manufacturer if you can not all brands will sell directly from manufacturer to the customer okay so 
With that being said, let's go over a little bit more of their uh, power uh, technology. So like I said, they do make power or tools and multiple different voltage platforms and configurations. What they do also do is they do this thing called power all technology, which really means they allow you to put like an X2 configuration on tools. So you can put like two of the 24 volt batteries on a tool and get 48 volts. This tool that we have here is a 24 volt tool, so it cannot do 48 volts and you cannot get two, two batteries and stick them on there, but they do make tools that do allow you to do that. And most of the Greenworks batteries, I think all the batteries that they have right now on the market, allow you to use it in a X2 configuration on those tools, okay? But like I said, this is not that. Let's bring you in closer and get a better look at it. So here is the charger that you really get with the Greenworks system. It's their 24 volt lithium charger, which means it charges pretty much all of their 24 volt batteries, regardless of the amperage battery that you have, okay? Um, it's got the two lights or LED codes on it, um, or lights or colors, I mean. It's got the green and the red. If it's red and it's solid, it means that the battery is too hot and it's waiting for it to cool down. If it's blinking, it means the battery is pretty much no good and you probably should replace it. If it's blinking green, it means that it's charging, and if it's solid green, um, this light right here, it means that it is charged and ready to go. Here's like the balancing connects for the charger, slides in pretty easily here, right? And then it also does slide out without having to unclip it, which is pretty standard for most uh, power tool, battery chargers and equipment. It's got ventilation holes on pretty much the sides, the back, the front, and one of the most interesting things I found out about the charger is that it does have two keyholes, but the way that the keyholes are designed is that you have to put um, like two screws and then one screw, the top screw fits in and then um, the bottom screw really slides on like that, okay? So the way you install it is you put the top on and then you slide the second screw in, which is actually uh, just a hair uh, you have to be a little bit more precise in order to get that in. The easiest way, if you're, if you're trying to mount this thing, I would really just encourage you to do is either get a piece of scrap cardboard or just get blue painter's tape or just any kind of masking tape or whatnot. Put it on here, poke the holes, put it on where you're gonna do it and then just put the holes there, right? Um, that's the easiest way I found to do it. But the reason I'm bringing that up is mainly because that's actually a very good improvement over um, a lot of other manufacturers that I would see on the market. Like for instance, the Eagle charger that I have doesn't have the slide on second uh, keyhole mechanism. And what does that mean? It means every time I take the battery off of the Eagle charger, I have to use two hands, one hand to hold this against the wall because I have my mountain on the wall and the other hand to pull the battery off, okay? Why? Because if you don't do that and you have two keyholes and the charger sits on there by gravity, when you pull the battery off, the entire charger falls off the screws or falls off the wall, right? And that's actually happened to me because um, every once in a while I forget that I have to hold it, right? And it's happened to me a couple times. So eventually what I ended up doing um, was just zip tying it there so I don't have to do that, but that's actually gets really annoying. Um, so I'm really glad that they did take a little bit of improvements to, to make that happen, okay? And it does have like rubber feet here. So if you did put it on the ground, it's not like the bottom ventilation holes aren't covered. Um, so it can get a little bit of airflow. So that's just a small detail that I saw and noticed, which I really appreciate it. So uh, when you get it, here is the two amp hour battery that you get in the kit, okay? And this battery is, I would say, probably the most interesting thing about, um, about this kit. I mean, it's a blower, but I'm really more interested in the battery, mainly because the build quality is pretty solid. I mean, it's, it's what you would expect out of like a, um, more of a, I think it feels like a heavier duty of plastic than like the Ryobi ones. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like the Ryobi batteries when it used to be, when the Ryobi color used to be blue, okay? That's kind of what it reminds me of, but it's got like a nice sticker here, nothing too much on the bottom, um, and it slides on, okay? All the balance leads and plus and minuses are there. It's got this clip, positive clip um, add-on, so it doesn't actually just pull off the tool when you're actually using it. And this is a two amp hour battery. And the most interesting thing about this battery is that it has a charge port. But before we get into that, I do wanna talk about this fuel gauge for a second. So when you first get it and you haven't pressed the fuel gauge button, it will take maybe a split second, maybe uh, like a quarter second or something like that. After pressing the button, until the lights come on. All right, watch this, here we go. 
Okay, so um, that came on a little bit quicker. Um, that's because mainly because I pressed it just before recording this video. But um, if you do press it um, for and it hasn't been pressed for a long time, it'll take a hat like a split second before the lights show up. And when I first got it, I really thought, oh crap, something's broken. It was the first thought that went through my mind, and then it came on. I was like, huh, that's interesting. So if you press it, like right um, after you've pressed it recently, it pops up right away, so no big issue. So going on to the most interesting thing about the battery is that this battery um, has a built-in USB-A charge port right here, okay? Uh, I'm not sure how well it's gonna come out on camera with my finger and everything there, but it's got like an automatic dust cover system, like a positive cover, so anytime it's not in use, it automatically pops up. That's obviously good because this these batteries will be used on like, I don't know, recip saws, bad, um, drills, impacts, blowers, and it's gonna get dusty and you don't want all that dust in there. So this positive uh, automatic closing dust cover is actually really great, but it has a USB-A port um, that's rated at five volts and one amp, okay? I did test it and it will not exceed one amp. So um, it will charge your high fast charge devices, but it will just charge them slowly. Um, if it can charge at one amp, it will charge it. If it can't charge and it can only charge at two amps, then it probably won't charge it. it may put it in like trickle charge mode or something, but it won't obviously charge it, okay? Um, but it is great, mainly because it, it's there, okay? And let me tell you, um, we've used this battery quite a few times. Um, the good thing about this battery is that because it's a power tool battery, the, the ruggedness or the build quality of this battery has been very great, right? So if you're using this USB-A uh, charge port, it really turns this battery pack into a 12 amp hour uh, USB battery pack, okay? Um, which is obviously, like I said, it's really great mainly because the power tool um, battery and because the power tool brand is actually built more rugged. So, you know, sometimes you'll find or get some of these, whether it's like a Christmas present or something or stocking stuff or these, all of these like battery charge bank tools. And a lot of them are built very, very cheaply. And, and the build quality on some of them is really bad. Like one that we drop, psh, split apart multiple, uh, multiple times and you always have to clip it back in. Um, other ones, some of them you'll see built out of like light metal, whether it's like aluminum or thin like sheet metal type thing and you drop it and it gets dented, okay? So we have a toddler, actually we got two kids and, and we always use this thing to charge his iPad mainly because he's always like knocking it off and those things are just always falling everywhere. So the battery banks that we generally have are dented or broken falling apart, whatever it means. So you probably can't tell on this battery, um, but it's actually been dropped a handful of times and it still works out fine. And with that build quality and everything being there, I believe this is, is the, having this neat feature on here is actually really nice um, because I've been kind of using this battery mainly for that purpose. Um, I'm not sure how many people who are gonna be buying this thing are gonna be using it for that, but it is nice to have it there, okay? So now let's get to the business part of the uh, of the blower. Okay, so this is obviously the blower. It comes in like three pieces. So this right here is the concentrator nozzle, and it is a positive click system. So you do have to pull it up before pulling it off. And the concentrator nozzle obviously reduces the diameter of um, the the tube into just a little bit smaller diameter. So it does concentrate that air going um, out to be more precise. Um, and a little bit more concentrated, meaning more velocity into that spot, okay? So I always use it with this on, mainly because I do like that. Not everyone will have to use that. You can use it just like this with no problem. So here's a tube, nice little green work sticker, 320 CFM. You can easily remove it by pressing this, pulling it off, or pressing this and pulling it off. And there's really nothing too interesting about the tube, it's a standard tube. One thing I will say is it is pretty short. Um, so I'm 5'11", and I do have to bend down a little bit to, to get it closer to the ground if I want to, okay? Um, it's a little bit uncomfortable to, to do that all the time, especially if you're, if you're using it for long periods of time. Um, but I'm just saying, it's, I'm 5'11", and you'll probably see me bending down on some of the videos and just trying to get it closer to the ground. So here is the axial fan blower business part of it. There's a little grate here. You can't really see the fan too well in there, mainly because it's tucked in back here, okay? Um, but it's got a great system here. You don't really have to worry about um, anything really coming in this way. But I guess it's really there for safety reasons so nobody really puts their hands and stuff in there. But it's also got another sticker here on both sides that pretty much say roughly the same thing. And on the back of it, um, it's got the grates 
built in as a part of the tool molding, okay? So on some of their earlier ones or uh, previous generation ones or whatnot, um, you'll see like this grate system or if, if, whether the grate's on the back, front, top, whatever, it would sometimes be black and it's like a piece of plastic that clips in, which was actually really annoying because sometimes if it had tossed around in the back of a truck or if it got hit with the ball or people put it down and, and there was like a tennis ball or something there, the grate would actually come off or get broken in or get dented or somehow misaligned. But now that the grate on here is actually molded into the body of the plastic, the build quality of it is actually much better and you don't have to worry about that, okay? The downside to that is you can't just take it off and pull something out if something got stuck in there, but it's a blower and your grate's always supposed to be on there, so that's almost never gonna happen, okay? So like I said, the build quality of this tool is generally pretty good. Um, it kind of reminds me, like I said, of like the older Ryobi tools when it used to be blue, if you do remember that back in the day. Um, but like I said, the build quality is pretty pretty good, nothing too too bad or super interesting to say um, but it's got the same grate on both sides and it will take in air from the top and the sides um, and it does look like it does take a little bit of air in from the bottom but i'm usually not looking at the bottom when i'm using the blower okay so this is where the battery goes on it's a pretty standard configuration that you would do with the battery you just plug it in right there and it's positive stuff. Like I said, you can't pull it out without pushing this lever. The thing I did notice about the battery is that once the battery is in the tool, it does get a little bit difficult to press this uh, fuel gauge button, okay? Um, especially if you're wearing like gloves, like most people do if they're doing yard work or whatnot, it's kind of hard to get in here and press this button because it does sit a little bit back behind where this tool is or this edge of the tool, right? So um, you can get to it, but I'm just nitpicking. It's just slightly uncomfortable, okay? And it's like I said, if you want to pull it out, you can easily grab this button and pull it out. Okay, I'm trying to do it in a really awkward thing, just trying to show you, it's just a little bit difficult. Um, but the ridge on it, or the lever that puts it down also has like ridges on it. So if you're wearing gloves, it actually is actually pretty simple. And if you're not trying to do it on video and do it towards you, it's even simpler, okay? The bottom of it does have a little keyhole here, okay? And it's, it's a pretty wide keyhole, so you can put down some bigger screws or bolts if you want. Um, it does fit on a drywall screw. I did test it. I don't plan to keep it on a drywall screw there, but I just had one hanging out, so I said, whoop! And it'll fit in right there, okay? So that's really what you get with this, okay? So let's go to the top part. The top part has this... Um, this trigger system here, or the on off button. And this tool does not have a variable speed trigger. This tool has a off button. You put it to one, it is on low. Put it to two, it is on high, okay? Um, to me, that is fairly, um, to me, that's not necessarily the best because sometimes I'm like moving like sand or like little pieces of leaves and trying to pile it up very, very nicely or whatnot so I can come by and pick it up really easily. Um, so I like to feather the trigger certain areas or, or sometimes, sometimes I don't always want to be on high speed and whatever speed this medium or low is on, I may not want to be on that speed either. It may want to be like 10% or 20% or whatever, right? So for me, um, I actually don't like that it doesn't have a variable speed trigger. Um, I can kind of see why it, they didn't go with that, probably because most of the people buying into uh, this 24 volt platform and this tool, it's gonna be more of a small size lot and gonna be pretty much using the blower pretty much at full speed all the time, right? So those people don't have to pull the trigger and then press the button on the side to lock it in and do cruise control, which is a two-step process. They can just go, whoop, right? And just go with it. So I could kind of see why they did that, uh, maybe saving a few bucks on the variable speed trigger too. But anyways, for me, I just wanted variable speed trigger. And for you, if you're looking for a variable speed trigger, this doesn't have it. But if you're one of those people who never feathers the trigger, then this may be for you. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much what you really get with this system. Um, I'll turn it on here real quick, just standing right here next to it as if I was gonna be using it because you're pretty much gonna be using it right here to get you an idea of how it's gonna sound. So 
So who's really gonna be buying this tool, okay? So this tool is obviously a pretty good tool. It's, 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 I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's a nice tool. It may not be the greatest or the best tool, right? But it's gonna be suited for many of those people who are gonna be in a smaller size lot, maybe like a less than quarter acre lot or whatnot, or maybe you just need to use a blower occasionally, right? Maybe you don't need the most strongest or heaviest or most powerful, most airspeed blower, right? You just need something that you can really clean up, uh, use generally pretty quickly and clean up um, easily, right? Um, it does work actually pretty well. I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty good tool, all right? Is it the greatest tool? Is it the most powerful, most airspeed, heaviest duty, most runtime tool? Definitely not. But like I said, it's in their 24 volt platform and it's targeted towards mostly those like entry level light duty use um, applications, right? I will go ahead and say um, it's it's not powerful enough that it's gonna blow all the mulch out of your bed, mulch bed, um, if you're trying to blow the leaves out, right? But it's almost just, just, just perfect almost if you're gonna blow out the dry leaves out of the mulch bed, okay? It's not so powerful, it's not gonna blow all the mulch out. I mean, if you move it in closer, you can blow some of the mulch out, but it's set up in a configuration, I feel like that it's perfect for blowing uh, medium to medium large leaves right out of the mulch bed as you can see if I throw up some video here. Um, so for that kind of application, it's actually been really good. Cleaning out the driveway, your sidewalk or whatnot, it's gonna be like that. If you got a really large lot and you got like these huge maple leaves or, or anything like that and you gotta blow a crap ton of it or you gotta blow a crap ton of wet leaves or whatnot, obviously this is not good for you. If you're doing something like that, you're probably gonna need like a gas backpack blower is what I would probably guess. Um, but for, for what it's all intents and purposes of what this targeted towards, it actually works pretty well. And with the battery in my testing has been around 10 to 15 minutes of, of runtime, depending on what I'm really running with. And it generally, I feel like it takes around 40-ish minutes to charge, at least um, what I've noticed when I've charged it. And I have run through it a couple times, so it, it's actually been pretty good. So like I mentioned earlier, the price of this kit with the battery and the tool and the battery and everything is $99, okay? And sometimes you get like a promo code or something like that in the mail and like 10, 15, 20%, you could probably get as low as like 80 bucks if you like get the right deal or something like that. Um, the easiest thing I could really compare it to is probably like the Ryobi One Plus 18 volt blower. Uh, it's probably close to that. So Greenworks is not sold at Home Depot. You could probably get it at Lowe's or whatnot, but I would probably go and just buy it um, on, at the greenworkspower.com because you can buy it directly from the manufacturer. Hope this gives you a good idea of what the blower is capable of and hope this video has helped you guys out. And if this, tell me what you guys think about it. I actually didn't see any reviews on this blower, so who knows? Um, yep, that's pretty much it. So hope this video has helped you guys out and I'll see you guys next time.